2.4 circles. There are two equations that can represent a circle. Standard form of an equation of a circle with radius r and center hk is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So hk is your center and your radius is r. It's a positive distance from the center to the outside of the circle. The other equation is general form. x squared plus y squared plus x plus y plus a constant equals zero. Everything is full from standard form and it equals zero. To graph a circle, the equation must be in standard form first. Let's work with standard form of the equation of a circle with radius five and center negative three six. Then we're gonna write it in general form. So because it says standard form of a circle, we know that it's going to match the template x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So the template, all we need to figure out is h, k, and r. x and y stay x and y because if you think of an equation, it's always x blah blah y or y equals blah blah x. So we keep x and y to keep it an equation we can plug in variables into. So let's identify our radius, which it says it's 5, our center, which is negative 3, 6. That means our h is negative 3 and our k is 6. Let's plug it in. So we have x minus blank squared plus y minus blank squared equals r squared. So our h is represented by negative 3, our k is represented by 6, and our r is 5. We can clean this up into x plus 3 squared plus y minus 6 squared equals 25. There is our standard form. Now we need to go into general form. So general form means let's multiply everything out. Let's FOIL. Let's combine like terms. Let's equal it to 0. So x plus 3 squared is technically x plus 3, x plus 3 y minus 6 squared is technically y minus 6, y minus 6, and that equals 25. So we're going to FOIL. You know how to FOIL. When we FOIL, we get x squared plus 6x plus 9, all plus y squared minus 12y plus 36, and that's going to equal 25. Now we need to put it in order. So we need to put it in this order of x squared, y squared, x, y constant. So we have to have x squared plus y squared plus 6x minus 12y. We're going to combine like terms of 9 and 36. And when we combine 9 and 36, we get 45. All equals 25. We need to equal this to 0, so we subtract 25. And we're left with x squared plus y squared plus 6x minus 12y plus 20 equals 0. And there is our general form. Do you notice when we went to standard form that our h and k turned opposite? h was originally negative 3. Now it's positive 3. k was originally positive 6. Now it's negative 6. Also, we squared to get to 25. So keep that in mind before we graph. Let's graph. So we need two things to graph, and it needs to be in standard form. So it is in standard form. That means we can graph. The two things we need are the center and the radius. So our center is attached to x and y. However, remember when we plugged it in, it turned into the opposite. So when we take it out, we need to take out the opposite. And the reason being is because this is an opposite equation, meaning you need to do the opposite. So instead of positive 3, it's going to be negative 3. Instead of negative 2, it's going to be positive 2. For our radius, remember, we squared the radius. 5 squared became 25. So when we take out the radius, guess what? We need to square root it because that's the opposite of squaring. And we get 4. So we plot our center at negative 3, 2. And then at the center, we use our radius to make additional points. So at the center, we go up 4, back to the center, left 4 back to the center, down 4, back to the center, right 4. 
as best as you can, connect those dots. It doesn't matter what your radius is, you need four points, up, left, down, right. Let's graph x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y plus 12. Now it's in general form. So hopefully you already said, I can't graph that yet. You're right, we cannot graph this. It needs to be in standard form. So in order to graph, we made it need to look like standard form. So we need to do things to our equation to make it standard form. There's steps. We need to make sure there's no coefficient in front of x squared and y squared, and there isn't. If it's x, if we look at x squared, y squared, there's nothing. It's just x squared, it's just y squared, so we can keep going. So our second step is to group our x's together, group your y's together, and move over the constant. So let's group our x's together. So that means anything with an x we're going to put together. That's x squared and 4x. There's always a plus in between because it's a circle. And then let's group our y's together. So if we group our y's together, we have y squared minus 6y. And then we're going to move over the constant. So it's the thing that's just a number. So the thing that's just a number is 12. So to move it over, we subtract 12. And we get negative 12. You see, it's slowly starting to look standard form. All right, our third step. We need to complete the square for x and y. And that's a formula. It's b over 2 squared. All right, so I need to do it twice for x's and the y's. So I'm just going to write it twice without the b. So if we look at our x's, the b is 4. It's the only number that's there, 4. If we look at our y's, the only number we have is negative 6. So we simplify. 4 divided by 2 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. Same thing for our y's. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, and negative 3 squared is 9. So a part of completing the square is to actually add those numbers back to each group. So in our first group, we have x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then in our second group, We have y squared minus 6y plus 9. And don't forget, on the right side, we still have this negative 12. However, on the left side, we added 4 and 9. That means on the right side, we need to add 4 and we need to add 9. Math is fair. Don't forget that. Our last and final step is to factor. So to factor, it's guess what? It's another template. So the template is always going to be x blank squared plus y blank squared. And then we simplify the right side. So negative 12 plus 4 plus 9, we get 1. The reason why this is the template, because now they're perfect squares. So when they're perfect squares, it's squared. Now, what goes in the perfect square, you actually already have your answer. You just don't know it yet. Right before you square your number, when you complete the square, that's your number. So right before we squared 2, it was 2. So guess what? That's what goes here, positive 2. Right before we squared 9, it was negative 3, so that's what goes here. Now it's in standard form. Now that it's in standard form, we can identify our center and our radius. So our center is h and k. So if it's 2, negative 3, that means our center is negative 2, positive 3. Remember, we take the opposite. And then our radius, don't forget we need to square root it. So our radius is 1. That means we need to square root it. And the square root of 1 is 1. We plot our center at negative 2, 3. And then at our center, let's use our radius. So we go up 1, back to the center, left 1, back to the center, down 1, back to the center, right 1 and we connect those dots.
Let's graph 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 12x plus 8y minus 24 equals 0. So again, it's very similar to example 3, so let's follow the steps. Step 1, let's make sure nothing is in front of x squared, y squared. Uh, that's, we have something in front. We're not allowed to have that 2 in front. Those numbers will always be the same in this class. Pre-calc, that's a different story. So we're not allowed to have these numbers, so we need to divide everything by the coefficient, which is 2. Again, those numbers will not be different. 2x squared, 2y squared, if you have a coefficient, they're going to be the same digit. So we divide by 2, and we're left with x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 4y minus 12 equals 0. Alrighty, step 2, let's group. So everything with an x goes together, everything with a y goes together. So for the x's, we have x squared minus 6x. And then we have y squared plus 4y. And let's move over our constant. So we add 12 to both sides to get equals 12. Our third step is to complete the square. And that means complete the square. Completing the square is actually two steps, the formula and then putting it to where it needs to go. So let's complete the square. Our formula is b over 2 squared, so blank over 2 squared. For our x's, our b is negative 6. So we have negative 6 divided by 2, that's negative 3. And negative 3 squared is 9. For the y's, our b is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. And 2 squared is 4. Now we put them back to where they're supposed to go. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then we have our y's. For our y's, we have y squared plus 4y plus 4. And on the right side, we still have a positive 12, but don't forget, we added 9 and 4 to the left. So you have to add 9 and 4 to the right. I swear, that is the only place people mess up. They forget to add it to the right. I see everyone do so well with the left side, but our brains make silly mistakes, and we forget the right side. Don't forget. Alrighty, our last and final step is to factor, and that's going to give us standard form. So when we factor, remember, it's a template. It's x blank squared plus y blank squared. And let's simplify the right side. 12 plus 9 plus 4, we get 25. Okay, remember, we factored this technically already. We just have to put the number where it's supposed to go. So for the x's, before we squared it, we got negative 3. So that's what's going to go here, negative 3. For the y's, right before we squared it, we got 2. So that's what's going to go here. Now we can identify our center and our radius. Our center is going to be positive 3, negative 2. Don't forget the opposite. And our radius is 25. That means we have to square root 25, and we get 5. So our center is 3, negative 2. Our radius is 5. That means we go up 5, back to the center, left 5 back to the center, down 5, back to the center, right 5, and connect those dots. Example 4. Why do we use circles? Well, many, many reasons. You'll learn intrig and calculus and all that. But let's break it down in our class. Why do we use circles? Well, Let's talk about the Orlando I Ferris wheel. You know, the big, 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 giant Ferris wheel on iDrive? This is 100% factual. You are about to find the equation to the Orlando I Ferris wheel. So the Orlando I Ferris wheel has a maximum height of 425 feet. That is true. From the ground up, it's 425 feet. It is massive. And a wheel diameter of 400 feet. So from end to end, it is 400 feet. That's a big. Find an equation for the wheel if the center of the wheel is on the y-axis and y represents the height above the ground. Okay, so first let's just draw. This is an application. It's a word problem. It's so helpful to draw things out. So if we think of a Ferris wheel, it's on the ground, and then like it's a little, you know, like a little beam that holds it up. 
right at the center. There's a little center thing right there. And then we have a circle that goes around it. Good enough. That's the center. It's at the center. Okay. So it says the maximum height is 425 feet. That means from tippy top all the way to the ground is 425 feet. Then it says the diameter is 400 feet. So that means the circle itself from here to here is 400 feet. Without reading any more, we can actually find this distance right here. That's going to be 25 feet. Because if that's 425 and that's 400, the missing distance is 25. And if we have the diameter, we can actually find the radius. So if the diameter is 400, radius is half of the diameter. So we have 400 divided by 2. That means our radius is 200. So that means from the middle to the outside, that's 200. Guess what? That gave us another distance. It gave us from the center to the ground. That'll be 225. That's 200 plus 25. So it says to find an equation for the wheel. A wheel actually stands for a circle. So we know that stands for x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So we know that. And because we know that, we know our r. We actually found it. It was 200. So we can easily put that in. Let's put that in right now. We're going to have 200 squared. Awesome. Now we just need to find h and k. Remember, we don't touch x and y because that's what creates a circle or an equation, x and y. Let's talk about h. h is attached to the x's. So if we think about x, x is left and right. So h actually represents the horizontal shift. So H is attached to the X's. Because it's attached to the X's, we know that that's going to represent a horizontal shift because X is left and right. So because we know that, X, a.k.a. H, is represented with the left and the right. If you think about a Ferris wheel, it doesn't move left or right. It rotates on a stationary point. It doesn't go forward. It doesn't go backwards. Since we know that, our H is going to be zero. So let's fill it in. We have our x minus 0. That's what represents our h. All we need to do now is find our k. k is attached to the y's. Since it's attached to the y's, y's mean up and down. So this circle does have an up and down distance. It told us up here that the y-axis, the y, represents the height above the ground. So since the k represents the center to the ground, we know that, that all that distance is 225. So when we plug it in, we'll have our k of 225. We can clean this up into x squared plus y minus 225 squared equals 40,000. And guess what? That is the equation of a circle for the Orlando Eye.